link is not, it says the content isn't available right now. So I think people are waiting. Um, I'm going to see. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Jay Rothman and welcome to Real People, Real Health. I am absolutely uh, excited and honored to have in a studio with me the cast and the filmmaker from Eight Days, which is a docu-series that right now is in fact airing on WGN networks as well as hopeforcancer.com. I am, uh, as I said, I'm so excited to have with me so many people that were either uh, cast members and or clients and patients at Hope for Cancer. And what I'd like to do is we, we've got such a large uh, group of people here. I'd like to really invite uh, Charles Maddox, who is the filmmaker, to really share from your perspective how you, uh, how you got connected with Dr. Tony and Hope for Cancer and why you decided to take on this 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 project, this docu series, awesome, eight days. Awesome. Well, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having all of us. I mean, it's uh, it's it's it, it kind of feels like we're uh, on that Entertainment Tonight couch or something like that being <laughs> interviewed, right? It starts to get a little bit real. I I keep wanting us to to get that realism and realize that we that everybody here is a star of a television show, which is unbelievable. But, um, you know, I, I had another show that we did um, probably a year earlier. It was called Reverse. It was a diabetes reality show. And uh, that went really well. And, you know, um, I was looking at doing another series uh, and kind of like looking at, you know, what conditions would be good, you know, for, for another series. And, well, you know, my father passed away from cancer uh, 2014. So... Um, it was something that it was, it came so fast. Literally, he was here one day and the next day he was gone, literally. Um, and, you know, I didn't get a chance to, you know, spend months with him trying to go through treatments and things like that. Um, so it was really devastating for me. Um, but I, I did have the time we had in the hospital, which allowed me to kind of have some peace. And, you know, in this whole process and in this storytelling, you know, it, it's really about the story because, you know, many people suffer from so many different things. I'm sure, you know, Jose may have two or three th things that he's dealing with. You know, uh, 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 Nicole may have one or two other things that I know I'm dealing with, you know, my little uh, cholesterol issues and I, you know, some diabetes issues that I have under control, but like you, Jay. And a lot of times people don't know what people are going through. So I wanted to create and continue creating a show that allowed people to go into the lives of these people who are fighting with these conditions every day. Like the other day I had a dream, it was crazy, that, that I was diagnosed with cancer. And it was, and it was, it was kind of scary because I was like, can you imagine being diagnosed with something that is literally going to fight your body and that you have to now go and see doctors and get blood tests and have insurance and make sure you have the right amount of money if you want to do certain kind of care and you know like Kate and all of them who are you know doing so many other alternative treatments and eating healthy and and everything uh, and and it brought fear to me so I wanted to, to kind of show what each one of them were going through and then their caregivers, their loved ones. You know, Nicole has is, is, is got a son she wants to live for. Kate has got a beautiful little daughter she wants to live for. Jose's got a beautiful wife that she, you know, he and family. You know, Carrie's got her kids too as well. Janine is, 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 is thriving in, in, in life and business and, and things like that. So really wanted to kind of see what everybody um, was going through. And um, so that's really how I got started on this. And on a side note, Jay, uh, somebody said it hasn't started because I don't see anything. I'm, and I'm looking on my Facebook. I'm not seeing it on my Facebook. Yep. I am um, seeing that as well, Charles. It looks like there's, a, there's some of, of a glitch right now with Facebook okay. and Zoom. Okay. Uh, so I'm trying to go in, in another way on it right now. And it's, it's because of the bandwidth and how many millions of people are utilizing Zoom. Got you. Uh, either way, we are uh, we are recording, and if we're not able to 
bring us into Facebook live. Yeah. We, still uh, have we will. Yeah. We will have it recorded and it will come in. Bear with me a moment here. So, so I'll continue on. And, and, and so in doing my research and looking to do a show on cancer, I bumped into Hope for Cancer and literally just sent him an email and, uh, you know, somebody responded and it was like, boom, you know what? Um, uh, they, they, they saw what, you know, could, could be in getting this message out and sharing, you know, the amazing work that they're doing over there at Hope for Cancer. And it, it literally just, it just clicked. It literally just clicked. It was, uh, it was actually a beautiful thing. And, um, you know, now we have all of us who, who are here now and had a beautiful time in, in Mexico and had some amazing results. And um, it, it's exciting. I mean, I'm looking at all the, the feedback and I've shared some with some, some of the folks here. And, and uh, man, it's, it's honestly, this show is... I hate to say it, if this thing was on like CBS or NBC, this thing would be the biggest show on television. I mean, the feedback is unreal. I mean, people are in, in tears, they're saying riveting. Um, I'm having people in the, in the cancer community now reaching out to people who have seen it, saying, hey, how can we help? Literally, I had a lady today reach out and say she's got a big network, she wants to share it, how can she help? Everyone that, that is, is jumping on board in the cancer community saying, how can we help? So, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I want to keep pushing every day. I mean, literally, I'm, I'm on the computer day and night, um, just, just trying to make those connections so that we can really penetrate a lot of the cancer community that may not know about the show. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, how was it for you when, as you shared earlier, that your dad had, had, had cancer and didn't make it? And then when you had this opportunity to, to do this project, how was it for you to kind of go, I, I have to imagine that on some level, you had to go through kind of go through a lot of the, the emotions came back for you that you may have dealt with or not dealt with you as know, you navigated with your own dad. You know, when I do things, Jay, I, I, I don't, I do them in a sense I do them for me because I know that at times when we, when we seek acceptance or we, when we seek approval, we may not get that. You know what I'm saying? Um, while my dad was a great dad, um, you know, uh, he, he, he didn't really, he wasn't really, he didn't know what I was doing per se as far as my career. So I did, I did this more so I can feel that, that peace and, and content knowing that, hey, you know what, as a, as a, as a son, I did this for my dad, whether he will ever know about it, whether he would ever appreciate it or anything like that. I just, I did it more for, for to feel good about knowing that I was, tr I'm trying to leave something for him, leave a legacy in some way for him. Um, if that makes any sense, you know? Yeah, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful way to honor a loved one that has passed. Yeah. And, um, and it wasn't just for, it wasn't just for him. I mean, obviously, you know, meeting everyone on 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 the show and seeing these stories and seeing, you know, I mean, Nicole, you know, had reached out to to us, and you know, she was someone who, you know, who wanted to be on the show, and and I think obviously you'll see from the from the show the season that you know this is something that she really benefited from. You know, I think. You know, if you look at Kate and, and, and what she brings and her power and strength and how she's so much of a fighter. And, and, and it's funny because I had two people today said, oh, no, one was yesterday. They were like, they were like um, I don't know about that Kate. You know, I said, man, Kate is no joke. Man. She is, because, you know, Kate Why comes off. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me their numbers right now. <laughs> You know, and I'm just going to go through, you know, what I think Jose and his wife bring is just, you know, is just is real loving and, and, and passionate from that side. I, I love that we that, you know, that the folks at Hope for Cancer brought them involved because I think they kind of tie up two parts of, of, of the equation where Jose is a male going through what he the certain kind of cancer he's going through. But he also has 
a, a spouse. You know, I think that, you know, Carrie and, and her journey on this as, as a medical professional and, and, and someone who is transforming and meta, metamorphosizing over here in cer certain ways is, is, is really played out so well. I think, you know, if you look at Janine, who is, you know, came on a little bit later, per se, um, and we met her first at, at the clinic. And literally, when I saw her and her, per and her personality and how vivacious she was and everything, I'm like, man, she's going to be amazing because she's a, she's a go-getter and a speaker. And, 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 and then you have, you know, Dr. Tony and Marcy. I mean, Dr. Tony is, you know, you don't meet, you know, I, I think, and I'm not going to do too much more talking, but I think, I think you know, when, you, when you're out here fighting whatever you're fighting, I don't care if it's diabetes or cancer, you, 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 you want somebody who cares. You want a doctor who, who you feel, man, you could sit down and have a conversation with. They're going to look at you. They're going to give you a few time, a, a few chance, a few minutes to, to really talk and, and share. And I think Dr. Tony and no Dr. Tony, you know, the passion that he has is, is just exudes. And you could just see it in his, in his demeanor. He's kind of like me. I'm kind of laid back. Um, and he's kind of, you know, that way, but he's, he's really passionate and just everybody. I mean, you know, it, it, the, the whole team, when you go to Hope for Cancer and you walk through those doors from the people at the front desk um, to, to going in the back, it, it's, it's, it's a well-oiled uh, program over there and they, they, they do great work. And honestly, you know, they're saving lives. And, and that's at the end of the day, um, I think having an option is key. You know, if, if, if I've gone somewhere and, 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 and something, you know, I want, I want another option in my battle for whatever that might be. And I think that's what they offer. And, you know, I think, I think we've got a couple of people here who can attest to that. And, you know, it's a blessing and a gift. And we're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep pushing this all day, every day for the next year or two. Trust me, you know, I'm trying to put together some situations where some distribution companies have come to us. They love the show so they can sell the show nationwide and put it on, not nationwide, worldwide and put it on a lot of various, because there, there are TV stations worldwide who need content. And so, so this is something that we're going to be continuing to push every day. I just sent out uh, a, a full episode to Robin Roberts yesterday, you know, from Good Morning America, from Carla, who uh, is on the Steve Harvey show, who deals with cancer. So every day, we're literally, we're making, making waves to try to get this out there so we can have as many people know about this and the work that they're doing and, and the amazing people at Hope for Cancer and the guests in the show. So Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that, Charles. Uh, Dr. Tony Jimenez, who is, in fact, the founder of Hope for Cancer, I'd like to give you an opportunity to, uh, to really just, uh, to just touch base on, just share with us right now what it was like for you. Your, your business is, in, is really about saving lives. And here you were, all of a sudden, placed in front of the camera, and you had to take on a whole nother role. What was that? What was that experience like for you? And and how, in fact, has it changed your own life? Oh, unmute, Doctor Tony. Got him. Nope. Okay. Good. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Excellent. So when I found out that Charles had reached out to us and what his plan was of creating a reality show, that is that's exactly. Just lost him. Uh, the first thing I said, hey, wait a minute, I'm like that. But then, you know, this would all come together. Charles, from the very beginning, because he said this is eight days of reality show. And when I think about a reality show, I wonder, you know, what's real, what's exaggerated, and, you know, what's made up. And so the first thing we told Charles is, we agree, let's do this, but it has to be a real show, a real reality show, right? And we don't want anything exaggerated. We don't want anything made up. It has to be the way it is. And in real life and whatever the results for our beautiful patients are, that's the results, right? And that was the first, uh, the first uh, requirement for us, uh, for Charles. And 
of course, he graciously said, that's what I'm about too, right? Let's present the real situation. So, and then after that, you know, it was so easy to work with him. And of course, all, all the, the patients, which I love dearly. Uh, at the end of it all, it's just being ourselves, just uh, being in the moment. Nothing was scripted, nothing was made up. And that's, that's so beautiful because I could tell you that any viewer that sees or recommends this show to their friends or colleagues or doctors, they're going to get the reality of what each of these patients live and what they are living. Uh, because uh, some of these patients, you know, were former patients and they came back uh, to do the eight days. Others were new patients that were just experiencing this cancer situation for the very first time. For example, Nicole, she had no clue about, you know, what vitamin C was. She had no clue about what a, a coffee enema is for, right? So, and then there were others that had, of course, more experience and, and Carrie coming from a conventional uh, medical field, you know, it's a whole different mindset. So the, the patients that came together, it was just uh, a blessing because different angles, different countries, different background, and that's really what cancer is. It doesn't respect, you know, race, denomination, culture, sex, or anything like that. So it was the uh, epitome of, uh, of a show, this eight days. I'm so blessed to have been part of it. And uh, let's take it to the world, Charles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you that uh, will be watching us on replay, unfortunately, there, there has been such an overload of uh, Zoom to Facebook, people doing just what we're doing, that we've had days where we're not able to connect the two and go live. So we are recording right now, and this will be shared out on all social media. Uh, for me, sitting here and listening to you, Doc, and, and Charles, looking at all of you that were cast members, as well as patients, dual cast and patients at the same time, for you, this is a reunion. Yeah. <laughs> this, in fact, I believe is the first time that you are all seeing one another in yeah. the same room, a Zoom virtual room, not necessarily <laughs> physically touching, but you're still able to touch emotionally and connect yeah. uh, to one another. Yeah. And so I'd like to open it up. Uh, by, by the way, Kate, if you have the ability to either put on a headset or bring yourself closer to your mic, you're very far when you are speaking. Um, that, will, that will be awesome. But what I'd like better. to do, that's, that is better. Thank you for that. Um, what I, I'd like to do is just share with those that are watching for the first time on Real People, Real Health. In 2019, I, I was honored and humbled to have a number of the cast members join me for an interview to share their, their full story. And so uh, Kate and I, I believe this is our fourth time together. The last time was prior to October, November of 19, just before you um, were gonna get your test to see where you were at in, yes. in your progress with, with the cancer. And then of course we had Janine and Carrie, who I didn't know was my neighbor uh, until we met through the connections through Hope for Cancer, Carrie lives in the Scottsdale, Arizona area. And we yeah, actually, we're sharing hikes. We're sharing hiking information these days. That's about all we can do. That's about it. Um, what I'd like to do is, is open it up. I'd like to start with Nicole and ask you, Nicole, to share with uh, us, if you may, two things. One is, what was it like to be asked and be part of this experience of eight days? And, and then the second question is, is if, if it's possible to share how you are doing uh, physically with the cancer, uh, where you are at with, with the diagnosis, you, the medical condition, and uh, we'll go from there. Don't okay. give it all away now. Don't give it all away. <laughs> so, uh, um, basically, I just so happened to be on Facebook one day, and um, I saw Charles on there, and he was just asking if any – you know, if you knew anyone with cancer or are you going through cancer? So I just sent him a message and say it, you know, pretty much, you know, who I was, how old I was, and that I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer for the second time. And from there, 
he just basically wanted to know a little bit about my story and um i gave him the information that i had and from there i was chosen to be part of eight days and i am strength i'm overwhelmed i'm grateful i don't even know what word to use i'm so blessed to be able to be a part of eight days and blessed to be able to seek treatments with cancer because honestly I don't know what my life would have been like without hope for cancer. Charles said, uh, "Don't give it all away." So, uh, <laughs> just to be clear, Charles, are we are we uh, holding back on where each uh, cast member is in in their progress? I want to give. I don't want to give um, like final things away because uh, I think that you know people people are really following the story, and because uh, once again people were like you know some people said man I really like Nicole I want to see what happens so um, I I, uh, I don't want to give it all away but I think Nicole is 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 doing great you know beautiful well I I will respect. I really respect you, uh, your wishes, uh, Charles, and I understand that. And that's, you know, one of the purposes of this interview right now. This is a reunion, but at the same time, it's an opportunity for, for those that have been watching the show, uh, the audience, the community, to really get to know you a little bit more uh, on an intimate level. And so, Nicole, I'd like to ask you, um, you know, when you were diagnosed with cancer and you were really, you were really struggling, I mean, you, you had, uh, you had the challenge of your life. And Joe, I believe it was episode two, uh, which just aired yesterday. And I, I watched it. The question was asked, maybe I think it was Marcy that asked when she picked you up at the airport, what was your why? Why is it that, uh, what is it that, that you're fighting to live for? Is the question for me? Yes, it is. Okay, yes. Yeah. So pretty much um, I'm from a small net. I mean, I have aunts and uncles. There's eight of them. And um, we're very close. We're very tight. Um, in the beginning, I didn't tell very many people that the cancer had returned. Um, it was just something I didn't want to talk about. It was sort of a dark place and I just wasn't sure how things were gonna turn out. But I knew that I wanted to live and I knew that I myself wanted to raise my son. I'm a single parent and I didn't wanna put that burden off on someone else to raise my son. So my son is my why. He's the reason why I chose, you know, I'm continuously changing my diet, continually pushing myself to do better. Even if I may fall in one place, I just dust myself off and try again. Because ultimately, um, I'm not, I don't want just my life to be saved. I want to be able to touch someone else's life to be able to teach them that diet change is a must, you know? Um, here in the States, they don't teach you to change your diet. And diet is a key number one key to success you know it, to being able to be cancer free so with me diet is hard just because you're used to eating the things that you're used to all of your life but it's something that you have to do you know i said beautiful um you know even i as a host i i mute myself so that we don't get a lot of feedback and uh, every once in a while, I forget that I have my own mute on, uh, which is okay. Um, I love what you said, how part of the, if I may paraphrase you, part of going through, having the experience of going through the treatment center and at Hope for Cancer was really getting educated, learning what role you could play in saving your own life, that you didn't, you chose not to rely just on Western medicine, to, to give you chemo and maybe radiation mm -hmm. and, and basically sit on the sidelines and, and hope that your life uh, will be saved by, by the doctors. Instead, when you made the conscious decision to, to, uh, to go to Hope for Cancer, it changed your life because 
you got to show up and participate in your own healing journey. Yes. And I'd like to ask you if you could kind of reflect back in that moment when you realized what you had truly signed up for, how did, how did you feel like, let's say emotionally, and are you aware of physically how you felt in that moment when you truly understood that it was now time for you to show up for yourself and save your own life, take your life back. What was that like for you? So um, initially, you know, it was really something that I prayed for because I knew it had to be something different. I knew there was, there was something more. There was a missing link I knew. And I kept asking the doctors here, you know, well, do I need to change my diet? Is there something different that I need to do? And they kept telling me no. And I had never heard of, heard of um, holistic treatments but I knew that there had to be something else different out there. So I just knew that I wanted that. And I prayed about it and I gave it to God and he, he made it come into existence. He made it so that I was able to join Hope for Cancer for treatments and made it so that I was able to be on a reality show, which I never thought I would do a day of my life <laughs> because I'm very shy. I don't like being in front of people. I don't like any of that, but God made it all possible. And, you know, I, I truly thank everyone connect with Hope for Cancer, all the patients, the doctors, the nurses, the staff, um, Marcy, everybody. Like, it's, it's just kind of like um, everything fell in place. Like God had all this planned out prior to and he just brought it all together, you know? Well, I, I do know, and I'll say this to you. you. You said that you don't really like, you know, being in front of the camera and, and being in, in the spotlight. But I got to tell you something, Nicole. I think that's just a story that, you, that you've told yourself. <laughs> but that's not the truth because that's not how you show up. You're okay. Even right here, right now, um, you're present, you're alive. Uh, you've got a lightness about you. You're just an absolutely beautiful woman. And, um, and I'm so glad that, uh, that you have had the courage to step into your discomfort and show up. Because by you showing up, you're showing up not only for yourself, but you're showing up for that beautiful young boy of yours who's about to, uh, to turn nine, I think, in June. June 26th, just a few days before my ninth birthday. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, 59th birthday, that is. Um, but uh, in any event, uh, I'm so glad that you agreed and joined us this, e this evening for this, uh, this reunion on eight days. So thank you so much. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Uh, Charles, you had a question. I think you wanted yeah. to uh, run I by wanted Dr. To, I Tony. Wanted to, and what was interesting about Nicole, and I'm sure, you know, I don't think, because Nicole is so quiet sometimes, I don't think any of us knew what to expect. You know, sometimes I would wonder, man, is Nicole going to really, you know, this is a gift over here, you know, coming over here. And is she really going to stick to this stuff? And, you know, seeing her make some of the changes that she's made now in her life, I think she's vegetarian or something, man. She, she has really gone, to, gone on in on it. But I wanted to throw it to Dr. Tony that, you know, when, when because we know that it's, it's, of course, the treatment is one part, but... The, 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 the sticking to the regimen and the sticking to the diet and the sticking to, you know, all the treatments and everything that goes with that, you know, is that something, Dr. Tony, that you see that sometimes people might fall short on that side of things where they just come to get the treatment, but they don't totally change the diet. They're not doing all the, the supplementation. They're not doing all the, the clean eating. Is that something that worries you at times when you have patients that come 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 to hope for cancer absolutely charles and uh, before i answer that question i'm really so proud of nicole and what she represents and what she exudes in eight days because as nicole it was uh, back then uh, there are millions of millions of people not only in the u.s but in the world that they they don't know that there's another option. And in this series, Eight Days, in this reality show, you'll see her growth. And, and for those of you that are watching, you'll see if you're in those shoes, that there are options for you. And so 
to answer your question, Charles, one does not heal just because one believes that they could heal or they say, you know, I'm good looking or I'm handsome or I have money or I don't have money, whatever it is. It's work. There are no quick fixes in, in oncology, right? So we need to follow what I've uh, termed the seven key principles of cancer therapy that are brilliantly uh, displayed in, in, in the series and, and by each patient as well. So uh, doing the work, being proactive, having a right mindset, all these things that we don't know and we don't learn in medical school. So that's why your doctor, your oncologist, Nicole, is not telling you these things about nutrition, about the immune system, about detoxification, about proper sleep. This is treating the person with the cancer, not the cancer in the person. And this is when you could have the best possible results. Thank unmute you for yourself. sharing that, Doc. What's that, Charles? I was going to say unmute yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that, Doc. Um, Jose Fernandez, it's nice to, uh, to meet you. We actually met last, uh, last week. Uh, you and I, uh, I reached out to you. We had a nice chat. And I, I'd like to welcome you to your reunion of eight days. And... Uh, Love for you to share a little bit about your backstory and uh, and how that experience, uh, how you embraced not only going to Hope for Cancer for treatment, but then being asked and invited to be a cast member in this docu series, Eight Days. What was that like for you? Where's the wine? First of all, man, it's a reunion. <laughs> that was yesterday. <laughs> that was yesterday. Yes, sir. Oh, for cancer, man. I was one of those guys that <clears throat> didn't know uh, that there was another alternative to treating cancer. Uh, there was, there was a, 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 lot of, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people that I saw die, and I saw them going through the process of death in their deathbed, as, a, as you know, as a pastor. Uh, I saw them... I saw them battle cancer. I, you know, I officiated their funeral. And uh, I would walk in through the period of life in their time when they were going downhill, you know, from a robust body to just skin and bones, man. And uh, it was really difficult to see that. And I would, I would pray, I would pray that they would be healed and they wouldn't happen, you know. And uh, eventually they passed away. And although that, that was very, very sad for me. So I, I had no idea uh, that, you know, there was another way. My sister passed away from cancer. Uh, you know, about now it's been four years ago, I think. Uh, a year later, my, my son-in-law, one of my daughters, I have five daughters, he passed away. A year later on the same, same particular uh, date, you know, so, and uh, my daughter called me. I was the first one that she called. And it was so devastating to hear uh, my daughter tell me about the death of her husband. It was a sudden death and it was devastating. So when I got the news, I, I just, I just, I just didn't know what to do. My whole world just was, was it was just a terrible day. I, I, I talked about that in the first episode of Hope for Can uh, of the series, Eight Days. Anyways, so, but I, 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 I was, I had a liking, I had a liking for eating properly, but I was, I was, uh, you know, people talk about today is a cheat day. I cheated a lot, <laughs> you know, so, and I have a beautiful wife who's been my advocate and she began to do some research and uh, we, we just took off on the first weekend of my, of my diagnosis and began to look at uh, what was out there. And, and came to find out that there was an alternative, alternative methods. And I read a book called Killing Cancer, Not People by a man by the name Bob Wright. And that was my, that was my textbook. And that's, that's where I read about Hope for Cancer. I decided to go to Hope for Cancer while I was in the Philippines. Uh, uh, I was in the Philippines on a vacation that had been planned before I was diagnosed. And uh, 
And while we were there, uh, I, I read about Hope for Cancer in one of the chapters. And uh, my wife walked into the hotel room uh, one particular day before we were coming back. And she said, that's it, that's it. You're going to Hope for Cancer, you know. And so that's how I ended up at Hope for Cancer. I had another friend, uh, a, a young um, mom that I had met, a, a God brought into my life. And she had gone through Hope for Cancer and she, she was successful. And uh, through holistic uh, means, she, she beat, uh, I think it's lymphoma. And the Lord just connected us. I was in Seattle, I, I was in California, she was in Seattle. And I was making a call to Seattle, and the gentleman that I was talking to, uh, to about, about a particular treatment says, wait a minute, I got a lady here that she can tell you what the treatment is about. And so she told me right there and then what the treatment I was looking for that man to do was about, but she also told me about Hope for Cancer. So it was like, okay, I have to go to Hope for Cancer, you know. So anyways, so eight days. Oh man, that was that was crazy. Eight days was crazy. Uh, I, why me? I was like, I told Caroline, why are they picking me? I told the lady that called me to invite me. She said, you know, I said I, I'm not a good candidate for that because I'm struggling. You know, I mean, not that I was struggling with my protocol, because I, I was that guy and I am that guy. Total, totally regimented, man. I, I don't fool around. I don't mess around. You know, I, was, I, I had, uh, the minute I knew that, and I heard the word one time called epigenetics, epigenetics, you know, meaning creating an environment around yourself that is going to produce wellness. I, I, I hung on to that concept, and I went to do the right thing, my food, my water, my exercise, you know, everything that you got to do. I, I did it all, you know. So, so I was, I was really committed and God was leading me and I, this is for me, like uh, Kate, Kate, my friend Kate here, you know, I'm, I'm the male Kate, you know, I'm going to do this passionately, I'm going to do it. I'm a quiet person, but I'm passionate about this thing, you know, so I expected results, but I was struggling when I got the call about eight days, because I was struggling with, maybe I should just go get an operation and get this thing done, you know. Maybe I should just go the conventional way and just get it done. And, and I was crying out to God, what do I do next? You know, and then I get that call. Woo, I was, I was a good call, you know, and I was still struggling saying no. And Caroline had to convince me that this is what you got to do. You know, God has given you this opportunity. So Jay, I, I went, I went, I decided, we decided together that, okay, we're going, you know. And eight days was a little oasis for me in my, in my journey. It was another segment, you know, in my healing, you know, to, to be able to get away and go over there. And, and for me, and these are precious people that we're talking here. Um, they don't know this, and I might have said it before, but they were like my support group that, support group that I needed. You know, when, when I went to Hope for Cancer, you, you, you work like a dog. All day long, you're doing therapies. You know, you don't fool around. You're, you're all, you, so you don't have a chance to talk with each other, the patients, maybe at the dinner or the lunch, we get to talk. But eight days was an oasis of support. I got to reflect. I got to hear everybody else. I got to cry. I got to laugh. I got to experience some good food. I got, you know, just a, a tremendous environment. It was a little oasis in the desert, Jay. And uh, it really was beautiful. And it just really boosted me up. It was a booster, man. It was my booster shot to get, get, get going and keep going and continue on a little bit, a little bit farther on and to be able to continue to uh, you know, be that hope. So um, that, that, that was me. And uh, so grateful for our good doctor and his wife, Dr. Tony and Marcy, you know, and just being able to be around them. I thought that Marcy was, uh, I didn't know who she was when I walked into eight days. She was at the door welcoming people. And I think I asked somebody, who is, her? Who is she? Because I had heard about her, Dr. Tony, but I never saw her personally, you know? So it was just really refreshing being able to see her, uh, her welcoming smile and, 
just everything else that transpired after that and the, the warmth and everything else, getting to know her, it was a real blessing. So I hope I didn't take a long time, but that's kind of a little bit about me. No, oh, no, thank you so much. I, I love everything you said. It was so meaningful. Um, the fact that you acknowledge that, that, that having the opportunity to be a part of this project actually enhanced your healing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, Doc, Dr. Tony, I got to tell you, I don't know how you could make this work with Charles, but if it helped uh, Jose, uh, somehow, some way, you're going to have to figure out how to replicate eight days for all of the clients and patients that come through. I mean, how's that possible? <laughs> Can we dream that one up? Well, I'll, I'll switch that question to Charles. Make it happen, Charles. But I'm, I'm really so proud of Jose also, Jay, because, you know, he, he stepped it up. He, he still, we all have stuff. Mm -hmm. But, and some of the stuff is deep. And, you know, Jose and everyone else, they just poured it out. The traumas, the conflicts, you know, the, the difficult stuff in life. And that's oftentimes uh, not addressed in cancer. We take care of the physical body, we take care of some emotions, but you know, to go deep at those traumas and once they're let go, boy, so much happens in the healing. And so this is, this is what I remember mostly about, uh, about Jose and him being a pastor, you know, counseling so many people throughout his, his life. This is his life, you know, he's, he's he, and, but then, for him to go through and 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 expose himself, I'm just so proud of you, Jose. And and for those that will be watching and are watching Eight Days, this is a big lesson, because to heal from cancer, we have to go to this deep level of traumas and emotions that we all have. It's it's such a it's such an interesting statement you share because so many millions of people that are diagnosed with cancer. They're, they're not, they're just not aware how much of a role they can take in their own life to save their life. And, you know, maybe that's a, a question I'll pose to you a little bit later in, in the show here. Uh, how, how can we bring more awareness to the millions of people that live around the globe? It's not just in the U.S. You, Hope for Cancer has patients that come in from all, all over the world. And it's an, awa it's a, it's a, an awakening when we realize that we have a choice. We, we, we can consider either a hybrid or alternative treatment to save a life. Yeah. And like Jose said, it takes work. There's no, you know, magic bullet or a shortcut. You have to do the work. You know, if you think that chemo or radiation is going to cure you from the truth. We lost you, Dr. Tony, you cut out. Yes, I was just saying, like Jose, uh, can you hear me now, Jay? Yes. Yes, like Jose said, you know, uh, there's no shortcuts, uh, there's no magic bullet, you have to do the work. And that's when, when the healing happens, uh, when we put in the, the work and the effort. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you for sharing that. And Jose, uh, thank you for joining us this evening. I. I'd like to introduce uh, my neighbor and friend, Carrie Crary. Welcome to the studio. Welcome to uh, your reunion of eight days. Ah, I'm so happy to be here. It's so good just to see everybody and hear, hear all their voices again. And it's very soothing for me. I'd like to ask you, uh, Carrie, uh, you, you yourself have been in, uh, in the medical field for, I believe, most of your career, if not all. And, About 15 years, yeah. Okay. And then you yourself were uh, diagnosed with cancer, not once, I believe, but two times, as you disclosed, in, uh, in eight days. How, has, um, how was it for you to be invited to participate in eight days? And, and what was your experience being part of the cast while you were, I believe, um, perhaps still in treatment at that time. What was that like for you? And what was your takeaway from the experience? Um, well, being invited to be on eight days for me was more of a dream come true because 
I entered my whole journey with this, with a really deep seated faith. And I really felt I was being guided along the way with all of my decisions and, and how I got to hope for cancer. I mean, a lot of people don't know this, but a stranger helped fund me um, to go. I really just felt guided. So I've been just wanting to share, wanting to share what I have learned, wanting to, sh you know, try to help and share other people. That's kind of became my, my purpose and my mission um, through this journey. So I was, ex I was very excited to be a part of that, just, you know, to, to hopefully help other people. <clears throat> um, the, the being in the medical field though, I will say was a, a bit tough for me. I actually work in a, worked in a department where we did the PET scans for the looking for cancer, um, in patients for our veterans. And, um, so there's a lot of, uh, teaching in medical um, type schools and, and nursing school, um, y everybody around you is scientifically minded and kind of um, very trained in their thought patterns. Um, but the funny thing is, is from the first time I was diagnosed with cancer, being a nurse, I knew I always wanted to just t do as little as possible to make it effective, meaning like, as least medications, the least amount of treatments, the least amount I wanted, you know, I, I had seen what chemo radiation does to patients and does to people's lives. And neither time when I was diagnosed did I have any symptoms um, from the cancer. So I, I was a healthy um, person. I, I've always been very healthy out doing the outdoor activities and running and all of those things. And I thought in no way do I want to just take the knowledge of knowing that I have cancer and, and go take things that are going to tear my body down and take my health away from me. So um, really being, being led, you know, it's a long story, but being led to hope for cancer, I knew that the idea of building your body up, even if you are going to do any of those conventional treatments, if you will build your body up alongside of them even, um, I knew that you um, just had such a better outcome, so much more hope. Um, and hope for cancer, That I mean, it's called hope for cancer for that reason. It just completely represents hope outside of, you know, your life being given to this cancer. You're muted, Jay. I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's such a strange experience to, to know that you're talking and no one's hearing you. For some people that may sound, that may feel real familiar. You know, sometimes we're in relationships where you feel like you're not being heard. But that's another topic for another show. This is, has nothing to do with eight days because I could tell you this is that uh, when you are a patient at Hope for Cancer, your voice does matter because right. you become a huge part of your protocol. And it's an agreement that you, uh, you make with, uh, with, with your treatment team. Yeah, and, and I'll say this, I think probably everyone here could probably say the same thing. When, when you're diagnosed with cancer, most people aren't like, oh, I have a long family history of it. Most people are like, how, how and why me? You know, because no family history, healthy, you know, felt like I was eating right, all the doing all the right things. But um, I, I do have a lot, I had a lot of very um, hard emotional, spiritual things that I had went through in the near, near, uh, near recent past. Um, and it, it, that came out on the show a lot for me. I became pretty emotional. Um, but that is the healing that has to take place. And that's what eight days did for, I think, most of us here, is it helped us recognize where the true healing within needed to take place. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to invite uh, Dr. Tony or Charles to uh, maybe just share from their perspective what it was like to, uh, to meet you and, and have you be part of eight days. What do what your guys take away? There, there you go, go, Charles. I just unmuted you. There we go. There we go. No, I mean, Carrie is, is a burst of light. I mean, she has a great personality. It's like she's like, um, 
uh, the, the 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 sister that you know, that that you may not have uh, you know, that you that you may have. So you know she was she was you know, it was good to have you know people who were of course you know they, they, you could have a cast and sometimes you know everybody is not as friendly or some people might be standoffish or clickish and things like that. So she was fantastic. You know she was 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 exactly what. I think we wanted her to 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 portray just just you know every the 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 the, the, the vulnerable side the side that you know had the the medical background the the side that was still like all of us still growing and still learning and 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 uh, you know I think that you know uh, as the show plays out we'll see you know how much she has grown and and where she's at now and 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 her journey which is it, all of our journey. You know, you know, one thing I, I, I'd like to share with you guys is like we're talking about our, a docu-series, which is the first of its kind, of my understanding. It has not, uh, there has not been another docu-series that has no. been done that really hones in on cancer patients and yeah. holistic alternative treatment for cancer patients, if yeah. I'm correct. And that's a big thing too, you know. Um, you know, we we had, you know, uh, I, I'm gonna, I, I like to, you know, as being the the, the producer here, um, you know, we initially had we had a network, and we were two weeks away from airing, and because of the holistic side of things, um, they 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 literally pulled us two weeks before we were about to air, and we had to find another home. Thank God we found another another home that was, you know, just as good. But I think that, you know, um, I, I don't understand why, you know, the holistic thing uh, scares people or, or why they don't want to go down that road. But, um, you know, obviously we're looking at, you know, a, a testament to that it works. And, you know, there, there are, I'm sure, hundreds, if not thousands of people who have come through uh, Hope for Cancer who you know, can tell an amazing story. And even just, you know, just even, you know, yesterday I had a guy who called me and he was like, and literally he was like, wow. He said, I just watched the show. He said, I had no idea a place like that exists. He said, can, can you help me get there? He said, because, you know, he just was diagnosed with something. He's not sure if it's cancerous, but just the clean eating, the way they're doing things. I mean, he was just blown away that something like this exists. And, you know, it, it's really just something that, you know, for me, I just want to make, allow as many people to know that there is hope and that, you know, like in Kate's story, Kate, you know, was diagnosed with six months to live. How long ago was that, Kate? Unmute. Um, that was exactly 18 months ago. Yeah. Six, six uh -huh. months is something we can do for you. You're not going to make it. How um, long ago? So 18 months, a year and a half ago. You see what I'm saying? Six months, 18 months ago, she had six months to live. I'm so. very much alive, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> very much alive. Well, oh, one, oh, thing I, yeah, one, thing I, one thing I want to add about Carrie is that she represents a growing population of patients that hope for cancer. And more importantly, people that need to watch this show that are in the medical field. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. now in the last in the last years we're having more nurses, more doctors, more health practitioners, chiropractors, doctors. Um, we even had a radiation oncologist uh, bring his mom to the clinic. So you know the medical field is slowly, very slowly waking up. But uh, the, Carrie was brilliant in bringing that diversity of thought, right? Because yeah, just, absolutely. I mean, it, it, if you if you learn anything, seeing people go through all sorts of disease processes, you learn that dis-ease is disease. And, you know, once you start really diving into the history of our, you know, our country where our medical um, system has come from, these are not new, brand new concepts. These are concepts that were originally how we were treating people. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I'll let other people look at, I don't want to ca cause any uh, uh, political controversy here, but um, you know, I, there, there needs to be a marriage. I mean, science is great, science is wonderful, and trust me, we need that as well. 
but we, we really got to marriage these two things and start treating people with, you know, the least invasive ways possible. And that being said, what we do at Hope for Cancer has tons of science also. So that doesn't mean that this is not science-based. It's a science-based right. as well. It's just not, you know, seen by the conventional mind mindset, but uh, there's a lot of science, uh, probably more. For example, one of uh, the things we use is curcumin. This has more studies than any drug has. There's over 7,000 publications. Uh, there's a prominent cancer hospital, for example, in Houston, Texas, that has studied this curcumin more than anyone in the world. And they don't prescribe it to patients, which is the, the oxymoron, right? But uh, yeah, there's science. There's a lot of science. Yes. And, and I get defensive too, Jay. You know, um, if, if man, I'm like, you know, real defensive in the fact that, you know, we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing real results. And, um, and, and I love the people there and I love what they're doing and people need to know that there, there's, there's an option. And um, um, it goes along with just overall better health. I think everybody here is, is a thousand times, even no matter what they're dealing with as far as their cancer, they're a thousand times healthier than they were even at times, even before they were diagnosed because they all have now know their bodies and they all are, are, are eating right. I mean, bet between these guys here and their diet regimen, I think Jose does water fast and, and <laughs> uh, Kate's got all kind of, man, she's got all kind of things going on over there. Uh, uh, Dean has uh, uh, um, her, her water that works for her. Uh, Kerry is 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 hiking up in the in the hills over there. I mean, everybody is so healthy. They are aware of what's going on inside their body, and for that, how can you how can you not appreciate that once again that they walked into a mental, physical, and spiritual place that allows them to become better people, better better cancer patients, if that's what you want to call it, and, 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 and find their why, that they're all working hard to, to, keep, to keep breathing so that can, they can t continue to be the best people that they can be. I, I love that, uh, Charles. <laughs> and I, I will say this is, you know, in my own, I, I had not been diagnosed with cancer. I had multiple medical diagnoses that could have taken me out and should have taken me out. But I will say this is that um, I've had a number of people in my life ask me, do you have cancer? And, I, and when I've asked them why, they said, Be because you, you had many patients, um, patients, uh, people, guests on, on my show that had been diagnosed with cancer. And it's interesting because when I was working in 2019 to do some massive healing, reversing of one of the diagnoses, I reached out to Dr. Tony and I asked him to, to help me, give me a protocol mm. with, uh, with the medical code that I had been assigned to me. Wow. And he came back to me with a whole page of notes. He consulted with his team at Hope for Cancer mm. and provided to me a protocol that they believed would in fact help me do some massive healing wow. of a, a very, very dangerous um, blood disorder that I have been diagnosed with in 15. Yeah. And so I share this, Charles, because we don't, you don't have to get a cancer diagnosis to wake up and look at the lifestyle that we choose or have chosen to live. And if we use the protocol that Dr. Tony and other leading doctors in the field of alternative treatment for cancer use, it not only will save lives of people diagnosed with cancer, but it will save lives of people, period, cancer or no cancer. And so a lot of people hear that word and they get scared. They don't want, they don't want to talk to you. They don't want to, they're afraid that if they just have a conversation or mention the word, they're going to get it, you know, like a virus or something like that. It doesn't quite work that way, but I'll tell you this is that the lifestyle that I choose to live today 
is the same lifestyle that I'm, I'm hearing so many of you share tonight is that lifestyle of healthy, clean living because it works for all of us, cancer or no cancer. It's a great, if, if I had done that out of the gate, made those choices to myself, I wouldn't have ended up with the diagnoses that I ended up with back in 15. And people sometimes think, well, you're giving something up. And the truth of the matter is, is I, I highly doubt that there's one person sitting in this studio with me right now that would say they feel like they gave anything up by empowering themselves to get well, get healthy. True. I'm seeing a lot of heads saying, yes, you're right. My son, my oldest, my oldest boy is 30 years old, and about six months ago, he said to me, hey, Dad, like, like when you're totally healed, are you going to go back to like how you used to eat? Because I know how much you love to eat that food. And I was like, oh, heck no. No, I, there's no going back. I love my lifestyle today. I love how I feel. I love the fact that I could take two hikes in the same day and blow out 10 miles, 8 to 10 miles, and still have energy and feel really good. And then go home, wake up the next day and do it again. Wow. Yeah. 365. I, I couldn't do that when I was 38 years old, but I can do it at 58 because of the lifestyle and the protocol that I live on today. And it's a beautiful way to live. This is, a, What's that yeah, this is, this is a, such an important topic. And I'll just uh, say a few things that, and the patients know this, that I would never prescribe something that I would not be willing to receive myself. And I do a lot of these treatments, like you're saying, Jay and Charles, right? We have to listen to our body. I, I do coffee enemas. I, a lot of the therapies that you'll see in eight days that these uh, patients uh, did and are doing, have done, I do them myself because it's, uh, the prevention is, is the key now. And, and these uh, patients and anyone watching eight days, if you're in remission, don't slack. You know, we need to keep up with uh, our healthy lifestyle, taking our, our immune boosters, our supplements, uh, detoxing, oxygenating, uh, having healthy relationships. It's just, you'll, you'll learn all this in eight days. In, in this reality show, you'll learn so much. This is... Uh, a reality show beyond that gives you a lot of education, uh, gives you room for, for, to think, to think uh, of, you know, the changes you need to do. Uh, teach your children, teach your loved ones. So I recommend that you share, uh, you know, this, this uh, interview with other people, and especially watch Eight Days. It's just brilliantly done by a master uh, producer here, Charles Maddox. Thank you for sharing that, Dr. Tony. Um, I, what I'd like to do is uh, open it up to Janine Janicelli. Welcome to the, your reunion. Janine and I met earlier back in 2019. I watched the replay a couple of weeks ago, and I enjoyed uh, watching the replay as much as I enjoyed being live with you in the studio. Um, what has eight days meant for you as well as Hope for Cancer, and how has it changed your life? Well, Jay, um, it's first, thanks for having me tonight um, and for doing this reunion as well. Um, it's done a lot for me because when I went to, and everybody who knows me has heard the story, when I went to Hope for Cancer, um, I just had a breast tumor in my right breast. I thought that was all that was wrong with me. And when I got there, um, thanks to the therapies, the doctor, Dr. Leslie and the, and the, and the um the emotional therapy, the best program that they do there. Um, I found that I had a lot of stuff that needed to be fixed between food and sugar addictions, um, no basic diet, um, feelings of inadequacy, feelings of, of not being loved or um, cared about, um, things back from my childhood. Um, I had a lot of gook in my life, a lot of toxicity, toxic people, um, toxic relationships. And in 21 days um, at the clinic, I left there with just about everything uh, bad and, and unhealthy in my system gone because um, the therapy was so amazing. And I learned about diet and about exercise and things that were important. And I did get rid of toxic people in my life. Some I still miss to this very day, but um, I just did so much um, healing. And Dr. Tony's book, 
is an amazing book and I'm not a book reader. So uh, for me to sit down and read that entire book, that was a stretch for me, but it, I learned so much from it and I've shared it with so many people because it's not just a book about healing from cancer. It's a book about healing from anything that invades your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit. And um, I can't say enough great things about the book because I, I tell everybody about it and I say, hey, get the book whether you've got cancer or not, and read it. And it's so nice to have people weeks later um, call me or text me and say, man, this book was amazing. I did this, I changed this. And so it's been able to, um, the whole experience has been able to help me help other people because I've always been a helper but and a fixer. But a lot of things in health um, related items, I could never fix. So when someone came to me that was sick, either emotionally or um, physically, you know, I could pray for them and I could be there for them to talk to them, but I really couldn't suggest what to do better because I didn't know anything at all. But um, I had such a learning experience. It's great because I can share with people through um, my weekly cancer call and my cancer Facebook page, and I can reach out to people and help touch lives, which has been the greatest thing for me because I'll be the first to admit that getting breast cancer was a true blessing for me in many, many, many ways. Um, and every day something will come up or I'll meet somebody that I wouldn't have normally met if I hadn't had cancer. And so it's been um, a great, uh, great thing for me. I owe everything first to God. I owe everything to Dr. Tony and Marcy and Hope for Cancer. And I'm so appreciative to Charles for doing this uh, series and getting the word out because it needs to be told. And um, there's a lot of people out there that would not be so bold and courageous to get out and tell these stories. Um, because the world is not a pleasant place at times. And between big pharma and, and the people out there that are all about money and staying sick, um, just to, to, to get the front my, uh, monetary benefit from it, um, it, it takes a very courageous person to want to get out there. And Dr. Tony's the most courageous of all, because what he does and what he's done for the world and for patients and people all over the world, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. And I just, I, I, I thank him and he knows every day of the week, I thank him in my prayers and to myself and um, just uh, what, what he's done for, for myself and for other people. So it's been a great experience from, from the start. What You're muted. You, there you go. I know. Thank you. <laughs> um, what would you say was your biggest takeaway from saying yes to eight days? What was your biggest uh, awareness that you came away from? Um, well, from eight days, it was a compilation of realizing that, that cancer is not a death sentence. Um, the word terminal should, should never be used by anyone because um, you can go a few days without food and you can go uh, days without water and you can go a few minutes without air, but you can't go one second without hope. And the series, Dr. Jimenez, um, Charles, all these people, they've given hope to the world. And so I think the takeaway was just realizing that it is not a death sentence because my whole life I thought it was. When I heard someone had cancer, my mind started to think, oh my God, they're not going to be around much longer. And that was such, such a sad thought. And because of this show, I realized that, um, you know, because of the show and because of the, the, the clinic and, and, and Dr. Jimenez and, and Marcy, I realized that cancer is not a death sentence. And no matter what stage you're in, no matter when you get it, no matter if it's spreading or not, there's always hope until the last breath. And between the clinic and what it, it does for people and this show, um, I think a lot, of, I don't think I know, a lot of people are going to finally get the message and realize that there is, there is hope and there are options. And I just hope and pray that they'll be open-minded into taking those, those, uh, that information that they learn and saying, hey, I'm going to give this, this a shot because I think it's so, so important. And, and we are all proof and, and so many of the other patients that I met with while there, um, they're proof that this type of treatment does work. It's not a hoax. It's not a fib. It's not some imaginary uh, story. It, it's real. It's truly, truly real. And I'm so thankful to this show because it's going to show a lot of people that this is real. It's not fantasy. Wow. That's, a, that's just beautiful. Janine, uh, I'm going to invite Charles to, uh, to share some, some comments uh, to Janine based on what you heard or what you experienced as the producer and filmmaker of having her in the cast. Well, I, I, I tell Janine this all the time, literally. I mean, when I when I walked into that that uh, that waiting room and they were like, "Yeah, this is Janine," I'm like, "She just 
started sharing and talking and and I was like, you know, from a filmmaker's and a producer's part point of view, I was like, she is fantastic because she's, you know, she she uh, is a great talker, very articulate, very outgoing. Um, so you, you you didn't have to worry about her not giving you. Um, uh, you know, the best of, of the scene, she was gonna, you know, you're gonna have to say cut with Janine over there, you know, but uh, she, and, 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 and it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, there's certain things that played out with Janine, you know, there, there's a food thing in there that, that I had no idea of um, that, that gets addressed, that you see another side and a, a side that's of things that she has to work on still, but, you know, it, it, it um, she, she, she's been a pleasure um, even after the show, she's been a great support and pleasure and ready to, 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 to do whatever to really get this word out there. She's always promoting the, the heck out of Hope for Cancer and about, you know, uh, the series. So she's been, she's been, um, you know, she's been amazing since, since the, the first time I, I, I saw her right, right in that Hope for Cancer lobby with that big old smile on her face. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> Janine, how does it uh, feel to, to hear Charles speak those words about you? Well, I'm very, I'm very flattered and honored, and I appreciate that. And I know Nicole wasn't always so happy with how much I talked, because I, <laughs> <laughs> I was such a big talker. And poor Nicole, I felt so bad that sometimes, because I'm just like all out there, and, and she was just so quiet sometimes. And, and she's such a pure, sweet, dear soul. And I, you know, I, I used to think I, I would like to be like her, just kind of toned <laughs> down and mellow and, and not so talkative and boisterous. But I guess if, if it's good, if Charles thinks it was good for the show, that's, that's <laughs> great. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the, I'm the first, I'm a walking megaphone with what I believe in. And Dr. Tony knows I'm all about hope for cancer. I'm out there every day of the week talking about it, no matter where I go, who I meet. Um, I'm talking about, I, not a day goes by, I don't talk about the clinic and what it did for me and what they do for people. And so um, he knows that I'm that way. And, you know, I, I talk about the show and, um, you know, no one's shut me up yet. So I guess that's a good thing. Sometimes people say, oh, here, you, in order to be spend the evening with Janine, you're going to have to hear all about her hope for cancer experience. <laughs> but I, that's okay because, you know, it's, it's, it's good. And I'm just glad that, I'm, I'm just glad it happened. And I met some really, really great people, made some great friends. All the other patients I've been, you know, I've gotten closer to. And, and Jose and Carolyn, I've been to their house for dinner a few times. And we're planning on them coming out to North Carolina for a trip. And so, it's been a great thing. I never in my wildest dreams thought that that would all come from having cancer and, and the show. And it's funny with the show because when I met with Dr. Tony and Marcy and they told me about the show, I thought I was going to be like a background extra in the clinic. That's what I really thought. And so a couple of days before I left, Nicolene was calling me, asking me all kinds of questions. And she's telling me, you know, cl clothes to bring and whatever. And, and asking me, do I, am I uncomfortable in front of the camera? And I'm like, I'm not even going to be seen. I'm going to be in the background. So it doesn't matter to me. I, cameras don't bother me. And then one afternoon she said, you do realize you're one of the five patients that was chosen, right? And I go, I'm going to be in the facility while they're filming these five patients. I knew that. She goes, no, you're one of the ones that got chosen. You're one of the five. And I was like, me? I was like blown away. She said, you didn't know that? I said, well, I knew I was going to be in the vicinity, but I didn't know I was one of the five. So it was a big surprise to me. And I just, I felt very, very grateful first and in, in just being there at the time and getting to meet Charles and, and everybody else. So it was, it was a super experience for me, even, even the, the needles, which I hated. And I, I share that with Nicole. <laughs> we both hated the needles more than anything, but we got through it and it was, it was just, it all ended up being good. And I think all of us, I can't speak but only for myself, but I think all of us overcame some fears while we were there between foods and green foods and things that smoothies I would have never tried monkeys and snakes <laughs> and all this stuff. I mean, we can't we overcame some really heavy duty objections and and fears and phobias that we've had at least i i especially and and to this day we had an exercise which i won't go into because you got to watch the show to see it but there was a, a a trip that we took and that particular trip i probably use what i learned every day of the week because there was always some kind of fear of something like yesterday we had this tornado that was supposed to hit and if it hadn't been for that experience I would be bored down the house and, you know, holding myself up in a room and going through all this craziness because of all the many fears that I had. And thanks to that exercise, you know, it's just like, hey, take a chill pill, you know, it's like not, not as bad as it looks. So 
it was it was a really great thing and and i know for the others I, i'm sure it did just as much for them as it did yeah. for yeah uh, Janine, I, I love what you just shared. And you know what, I, what I'm hearing is, is that we change our perspective when we're faced with life and death. The things that we were fearful of before, up until that day, it's a game changer. Because once we have the courage to face our biggest challenge in our life, which is stepping in to ourself to show up and get well. The things that we thought were important before, a lot of those things don't matter anymore because we realize how truly vulnerable we are and how with one phone call, one test, our life can change and will change. And it's interesting because when we are all faced with that one phone call, that one visit with the doctor, yeah. and our, the word that comes to mind is fear. Yeah. And of course, we're humans, so we're going to have that experience and any idea of potentially choosing alternative treatment brings a whole nother type of fear. But I think what separates those that choose alternative treatment, like what Hope for Cancer offers, and those that don't, is one other word, courage. There's not a greater feeling, at least it hasn't been for me, than to empower myself with knowing how to trust myself and not put all my faith into someone else's opinion that just happens to have a little bit more education than, than I was given. But learning how to trust my own intuition, listen to it, pay attention to it, and then make choices for myself that I believe were and have been in my best interest and in being able to defy whatever odds were given to me. As Kate and many of you experienced with, uh, with what you refer to as a death sentence, and you have defied the odds, each one of you that is sitting in this show with us tonight. And, and, and uh, Jay, just to jump in real quick, two things. I was gonna say, you made a great point. Um, you had a few things, health conditions that you were able to, to beat um, through hard work and dedication. I think that's the same thing at many times when people go to that doctor and they say, well, you got high blood pressure, take this medication. And we just trust the doctor, right? We don't, we don't, we don't, we just go take that medication. I think it's the same thing at times with, you know, um, you know, treatment of, of, of cancer at times. I think it's just, okay, well, you got this, you know, like Jose, it, you just, you know, Jose looked at those options and said, no, I'm not ready to get that operation yet. You know what I mean? Or I'm not ready to jump into chemotherapy. Not saying that once again, you know, it, 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 that can be fantastic for some people, but I think that just knowing that there's another option that is on the table is key. I also wanted to definitely just say, man, I, I really thank everyone. They, every, all of them were troopers, uh, Jay. When I say that, you know, um, we had some hot nights there, beautiful house, but <laughs> the AC wasn't, wasn't always the best. <laughs> um, the place that I was staying across down the road, boy, man, I, 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 I was ready to sleep on the balcony one night. It was so hot. I was sweating like a, a pig, but um, everybody, you know, we, you know, they would come from long distances, you know, you know, sometimes almost about 45 minutes to come to the house every day to do their scenes and, and be a part that, you know, Nicole and Janine would actually be working, you know, at, at staying at, you know, going to Hope for Cancer and then coming to the house after that. Um, they were always ready. They stayed late. Um, you know, this was, honestly, this was like family. I mean, it, it uh, you, you hate to ha almost go home because we all became so close and had such a good time. So I definitely want to thank them for that, for really just, just enduring and, and, and long shoot hours at times and, and just trusting the process. 
Um, like Dr. Tony said, I think that, you know, we, we really, um, we, because it was reality and we didn't force reality, you know, um, is there times we wanted to, you know, make sure that reality came to the surface? Yeah, of course, right? Because this is a television show and we want to make sure that people, you know, tune in and they want to see the stories and they want to see. And I think at times, because it was everybody's first time and, you know, it's not Real Housewives of Atlanta. So with Real Housewives of Atlanta, they know, okay, we're going to be ratchet today. But because this is real life and it's cancer based and it's their story, trying to pull that story out, um, you, you had to kind of work that line because, you know, you know, they didn't sign up for Real Housewives. You know, they signed up to, to come kind of see what was the process and share their story. So sometimes we did have to, you know, you know uh, sometimes I would pull Nicole to the side and say, girl, come on now. <laughs> I need some fire over there. You know what I'm saying? And she turned it up the best she could, you know, and, uh, and she did a great job. So I think, you know, everyone was, uh, I definitely got to say that there's some real moments in there. And uh, it was, you know, I, I wish we had Marcy on there because it was, she was a load of fun too as well. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to say that. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Charles. And Janine, thank you so much for showing up uh, on this reunion uh, and sharing your, your, your experience that you, uh, that you embraced with your full heart. Um, we've got Kate Malvinen, who is coming in from down under. She is probably our longest distant uh, cast member, joined us, joined the crew from Australia. And uh, boy, Kate, this has been quite the ride. Um, I remember the last time you and I did a show, it was um, before you got your last set of test results. And I remember, yes. I remember you and I having some incredible moments uh, in conversation, and we actually raised our arms up, and we we, <laughs> we had a lot of we had a lot of fun. Uh, we said some mantras together, and uh, there was such a beautiful connection. And I've just enjoyed following your journey through social media, through our personal messages uh, to one another on occasion that's just been absolutely beautiful and i'm grateful that you're in my life today uh, but this is less about me and more about you so i'd like to ask you kate uh what has this i know there's so much you we could spend another hour <laughs> just, just answering this question but what was it like for you uh who i think made it to hope for cancer three or four times and then was invited to be a cast member sharing your true reality in this house, in this home for eight days. What was that experience like for you and how has it impacted your healing journey? Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I mean, the, the first time I went to Hope for Cancer was a, a year and a half ago and the results were just phenomenal that I got. So right there and then I became that clinic's number one fan, Dr. Tony's number one fan, Marcy's number one fan. And I went, I am invested in this, this clinic. This, 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 this is um, changing life, certainly changed my life. So I've been back again, 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 again. Um, and from the very start, my story, um, I, I, I say my, mine and my daughter's story has kind of been in the social media. People have been on it. We've done a number of interviews, you know, nationally, internationally. Um, so then when I get an invite to say, hey, can we fly you back to Cancun and you're going to be on the TV <laughs> to tell your story? I can tell you what, there was, there was, no, there was no second thought there. It was like, yeah, brilliant. Um, so every part of it was was, was a privilege, was an honor. Um, I felt very blessed to be able to tell my story because each of us here, I've been listening to everyone else's, um, you know, story. And I sit there going, yeah, I agree with that part. And yes, I understand that part. And I believe that part too. Um, something that um, uh, Janine said that cancer has almost been a blessing. So it's a, it, it could be a quite a strange statement to say, but I've always said that cancer has given me so much more than it's taken away. Um, my life is, is much fuller now. Um, I'm much healthier now. I'm much happier now. Um, I did say uh, in, in the show that by the time the end credits roll on this show, I want to be able to say that I'm, I'm cancer free. Now, um, 
there's no spoiler alert here. You're going to have to watch the show to see that. But I did say, um, not only am I going to get cancer free, but I'm going to do it within 12 months. Um, so I have lived a very, very regimented life. Yes, the food, yes, the water, yes, the lifestyle, even the way I breathe, everything has, has, has changed. Um, uh, you know, toxicity around the home in skincare, face care, candles, um, you name it, my, my life has changed a hundred percent and a hundred percent for the better. Um, so yeah, it was, was an amazing experience. We've, um, I've created wonderful friendships, um, and the learning from being a part of this show is just phenomenal, phenomenal. I've already hit the ground running in the last 18 months and I wouldn't change a single part of it. Unmute Jay. Unmute Jay. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that, Kate. Uh, you mentioned your daughter, you have a beautiful little girl. Her name is Annabelle. Yeah. And, you know, two things that stand out for me as a witness to, to your journey. One is, is, is how uh, you clearly communicated that your why is, in fact, Annabelle. When you were diagnosed, I believe Annabelle was two years old. Was. Yeah, she was. She's um a hundred percent. She's she's my reason. She's my fight. She's my she, she she's she's the goal. You know, um, I I perhaps would have you know when you do get the the diagnosis to say you you have cancer and, and you're you're going to die. Um, I, I think a lot of people go shit. That's that's horrific, and the, but they, they they understand that, and that is the path that you are now on. That you are going to die, and will will be there for you until the very end. But for me, that was never a question of accepting that um, because of my child. So I feel very blessed that I do have to have my little girl, and I do uh, also very blessed that I did have such a horrific prognosis. There wasn't another option. There wasn't. It was either stay in Australia, do nothing, and die or get on a plane, go to Mexico, to a country you've never been to. Um, I don't speak Mexican. Um, I have no understanding of, uh, of, of how things are running in Mexico. It was either stay, stay in Australia and die, or get on a plane and go to a country you've never been and, and, and take your chances. Well, I can tell you I'm very happy I took my chances. Um, so, and uh, yeah, the, the, the moment those um, borders open again and we can get on planes, I'm going back for another week because I want to have my, my, my maintenance. Um, it's an incredible clinic. Um, it, saves, it saves lives around the world and yeah I've, yeah I've been very blessed to have a piece of that speaking of saving lives um, you shared in in our interviews you shared that very publicly that they really they didn't really have treatment to offer to you their chemo and radiation uh, they said you were too far gone uh, the disease had spread throughout your body they gave you a limited amount of time they offered you uh, one particular pharmaceutical drug that would perhaps maybe prolong your life up to a year and a half at most, I believe, but there was no treatment available. They basically told you to go home and get your get your papers in order. Uh, and pretty, yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty much. Um, and and of course, it's quite unbelievable. I was 39, going to the gym five times a week, a non-smoker. It was come on, come on. It must be something. Um, it was a lung cancer, lung, liver, lymph, hip, spine, ribs, shoulders, pelvis. The more scans I had, the more they'd find, and they said there's nothing we can do. Um, they were very excited about the targeted therapy drug I was put on, and I'm still on it. Um, they said this will hopefully give you another year to live. Well, that for me was, was, was not enough. Um, so that's when I had to um, reach further afield to see what was available. And I think I was very lucky in that I chose the right clinic for me. There's a lot of clinics around the world, but this one is the one that was suggested to me by, by two um, people in the medical professional said, look, there's a clinic, it's in Mexico, you should go there. Um, and within within two weeks, I think I was there. I was on a plane, and I was mm -hmm. I was off to Mexico, and I've never looked back. Never ever looked back. I remember when uh, Dr. Tony joined you and I in a studio for one of our interviews, and he shared something that was very touching, incredibly powerful. When you had first walked in a hope for cancer, you could barely walk. You were in so much pain, and Dr. Tony. Uh, on I think your, I don't recall if it was your first or second visit there. He took a video 
uh, you <laughs> and his wife, Marcy, uh, literally on a beach in Mexico <laughs> while you were in treatment, you had a race and you ran with her. Running, running races on the sand in 35 degree heat with his darling wife. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think when you probably walked in a, the treatment center for the first time, you could have comprehended that if Dr. Tony said that in this amount of time, you and my wife are going to be racing on the, on the sand, you would, have, you would have probably thought to yourself, I don't know how that's possible. Oh, I mean, at my very worst, I, I could hardly stand. I certainly couldn't pick up my daughter. I couldn't make it to the bathroom, you know, for a wee on time. And, you know, I'd laugh about it with friends, but there was something severely wrong and it really was not funny at all. Um, but my life rapidly changed from, from walking into the clinic. Um, I walked out, the, the first round of treatment, I walked out of there like a new woman. I really did. After just days, my body started healing and repairing itself. Um, so by the time I'd left at first, the first time, 75% of the cancer was gone. That's in just 21 days. It's a, it's a miracle place. I'm pausing for a moment because I really wanted to feel into that statement. Wow. Uh, you actually made my, you made my eyes water, actually. It, it's the, the little key reminders you said when you first got there, you couldn't walk. I'd, I'd forgotten that. To me, that's, that's 18 months ago. That's, old, that's last year's news, you know. Now I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm healthy and living and happy. And, um, but yeah, little, little, little reminders like that. And I think we need those reminders. But to me, that was, that was very powerful, Chase. So uh, yeah, I had yeah. to wipe a couple of tears from my eyes right there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, I got a few here myself. Um, why I got emotional in this moment is because each one of you beautiful people represent hope and courage for millions of people around the world that wake up today and are told their worst nightmare is real. And each one of you represent life, hope, it's possible. And each one of you have defied your own odds. And uh, whether you know it or not, Kate, you were part of, of inspiring me, you know, in, in my own healing journey. Uh, you held me up uh, during moments when, you know, we all have those moments, not that many. I could tell you that, not in this room, but we all have those, those moments of one more day, like, okay. Uh, but you always showed up every single day. And what I loved about watching you navigate through these past 18 months is, you made a very conscious decision to not be private. Yeah. You went public, you blew it wide open. You, you probably didn't even know what Instagram was when you were diagnosed. No, um, I had no idea. I was kind of, I was, I was pushed, I was forced into that. Um, only that I live in a small town and I, I have a, um, a business here and people knew my story before I knew the story. So people coming up to me going, gosh, I'm, I'm so sorry, here you have cancer. I hadn't been diagnosed with cancer. I'd said to a couple of friends, there's, there's, there's rumors at the hospital. So I was, I was pushed into that. I'm actually quite a private person. I'm not on Facebook. I don't have Twitter until um, my diagnosis. I never had a personal Instagram account. So I was pushed into it. But um, through that, I have been encouraged and supported and and held, held high and held in people's hearts. It's been, um, it's been an incredible journey. 99.9% .9 of it has been incredibly positive. There's been a few times where I've been attacked for my, um, my choices to uh, delve into integrative medicine. But um, here I am, I'm the walking, talking, living proof, as are all these other beautiful people in your, in your studio today, Jay. So 99.9% uh, .9 positive, I can take that. Beautiful. Pretty good. I love those odds. We'll take them any day of the week, right? Any day of the week. All right. <laughs> any day of the week. Charles, 
Yeah, I was going to say that uh, one, one thing I really love about Kate, I mean, she is, she's a, she's a strong, opinionated woman, but she has <laughs> a heart, man. I mean, Kate probably will cry faster than anybody in here. I mean, she is, <laughs> she's, uh, she's got a soft side, like, like you have no idea. And so uh, I'm starting already now. Can you not say that? <laughs> You know, and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think that you know, I just, I just, it, it once again, it, it, this is all really just, it worked out in such a blessing, and um, you know, I can't say enough about all these people here and uh, the times that we had. And, uh, once again, I think you know, Marcy and Tony and and Dr. Tony for really. You know, and, and uh, you know, put this ensemble together so that we can get out here and really, you know, just tell these stories. So, thanks for sharing that, Charles. Dr. Tony, I'd like to invite you just to share some thoughts or comments about your experience uh, and why you and Marcy embraced Kate the way you did. You have so many patients that come through your your two facilities in Mexico. What was it about Kate that uh, like really got your attention? The main thing about Kate is that she knew that why she was there, she had a positive sense about herself. There was no failure with Kate. It was get well or get well. There was no other option. And I pray to this day that all the patients that come to Hope for Cancer have that same thought process. Because when there's some doubt, is this going to work? Am I at the right place? That in itself is sabotaging the person. And so uh, this is a learning experience for every, everyone that watches eight days, not only with Kate, but with all the patients, even with uh, Nicole, that she had no clue why she was getting <laughs> the treatments she was getting at the beginning, right? Now she can teach us about this, but uh, you know, it, it's so important. And also that in the eight days, there was just a great disparity but within that, I think Charles would agree, there was a, a lot of synergy, right? And there was balance of personalities. There were some conflicts, of course, and, and you'll see them throughout the show. But uh, all in all, I'm just so proud of Kate. I'm proud of each and every one of them because they did step out outside of the box. And Kate actually had the worst diagnosis of any of the, of the patients on this uh, reality show. I mean, lung cancer, primary lung cancer, metastatic, all the places she mentioned, young female, not a smoker. Hey, prognosis is very, very poor. And so yeah. you'll see throughout this, uh, this eight days how the treatments unfolded, how you know they, they assumed their responsibility with their own health because I could only heal myself, but I give you the tools, the information, the education to do the work. And then the body will follow and do the healing if the mind and the spirit are in the right place. And that's very important. And Kate had that. She had the no, this is not going to fail. And, uh, you know, people talk about the placebo effect. Well, why not, right? Why not? The placebo effect is important. And, and, uh, and so... I don't know, this was a, a big blessing to show. I can't wait for, um, uh, for people to watch, you know, episode three and, and, and forward because it's, it's just spectacular. I, I, I wanna thank you, Jay, for putting this together and uh, for, for the dear patients. Uh, I love them all. Charles was a maverick, you know, this is not easy uh, to, put, <laughs> to bring this together. I mean, cancer is cancer, you know, this is not, uh, this is not treating high blood pressure or diabetes. I mean, the reverse was wonderful, uh, but when you're dealing with cancer, this is this is a whole different, uh, uh, you know, ball game, if you will. So thank you also, Charles, for for everything you've done and will do to get the, this word out, because people have to have to hear this. And what I want to do is is change the statistics. 92 to 94% of the patients we see at Hope for Cancer are stage four. 
they've tried everything. When they're given up on, that's when they call us. But hopefully with eight days, they'll realize that, hey, seek help earlier on. If you wanna do chemo, you wanna do radiation and surgery, we respect that, but let's do an integrative approach. Let's detox, let's build the immune system. Let's work on the emotional, spiritual, and so forth, those seven key principles that are so, so important. I've only been doing this for 30 years, Jay, and you know we know a bit, we know a bit. I've been to over 70 countries. I have colleagues all over the world and doing research. So it's a, it's a fabulous show. Uh, again, thank you all for, for this opportunity. You know, when I went into medicine, I had no idea this was going to happen in my lifetime, right? But uh, I'm so proud. I give the Lord thanks in the first place and all of you and Marcy, and uh, it's just been wonderful. So thank you, and I love you all. Doc, uh, you're, you're very welcome. I'd like to ask you, um, you invited a number of people to join us. We've got, uh, I think we've got about 22 people in this, uh, in this conversation this evening. What was your intention for inviting those that were, that were not in, the, in, the, in eight days to participate for tonight? Well, there's a number of people on here that uh, work at our, at our uh, Tijuana treatment center. So for cancer has two centers, one in Tijuana, Mexico, which was the first one that we founded in the year 2000. And then Eight Days was filmed in Cancun, our second center that opened in 2005. So there's some attendees to this that are in our Tijuana Center and haven't really seen uh, or met some of these patients. I know Jose has been to our Tijuana Center as well, uh, but Kay, Carrie, uh, Janine and Nicole have, you know, they don't know them. So there's a few people uh, that are part of our family or our, our colleagues and our staff at the Tijuana Center. So now they know you guys and they've seen you, they've heard you. So that, that's because this is an encouraging, you know, being in the front line of, of doing cancer therapies is tough. And for our staff members, you know, our, our professionals to see you, you've blessed them. Just like Kay has blessed Jay, now you have blessed our staff members that haven't met you from our Tijuana Clinic. So I'd like to thank our, our nutritionists on, on board, some of our doctors and others. Also, you know, what's the dearest to my heart is our patients, of course. And we have Olga. Olga is from New Jersey, and uh, she's been one of our longer-term patients, also with breast cancer. So hearing, hearing uh, Janine's story and, uh, so, and, and Carrie's story is so important for Olga. And then we have Joelle. Joelle uh, is a recent patient. She was just discharged from the Cancun Clinic uh, a bit over two weeks ago. Uh, I was there in Cancun two weeks ago, and, and I, I, I met uh, Joelle. And she's, uh, she'll be a good candidate, uh, Charles, for season two of Eight Days, actually. She's, uh, she has a great story, and, um, but Joelle's there with us. Uh, I don't know, uh, Jay, if you want any of them to say anything, but, um, but that was my intention from, for them to meet you, know, you, to meet Charles, to meet the, uh, the other patients, and, and to be encouraged, because we all know someone that has cancer, uh, they say by the year 2030, everyone in the U.S. will have cancer sometime in their lifetime. So let's start now with prevention that is, is the same as a treatment. It's not too complicated, but it does take work. If, if somebody wants to buy your book, where can they buy that on a bookseller? Or do they have to buy that directly through your website at hopeforcancer.com? Yeah, now it's on Amazon also. So they could go to Amazon and the book is called Hope for Cancer, F-O-R, Hope for Cancer, Seven Principles to Remove Fear and Empower Your Healing Journey. So it is on Amazon. Uh, my suggestion is if you're, if you're with us this evening or watching us on replay, uh, whether you have cancer or not, it's irrelevant. What's relevant is to own a book like this is basically a blueprint for living life. It's a book of prevention as well. It's a book to help prevent you from getting a diagnosis because it, 
it's a lifestyle. It teaches you there's that book is a book of wisdom and decades of research and studies and science that Dr. Tony Jimenez has put together in a, in a format that he breaks it down into simple English. And so I suggest uh, that you buy this book, that you invest in yourself a few dollars to own this book because it may in fact not only, it may not only help you, but it may save your life or a loved one. So thanks for putting that up there on the screen, Janine. I appreciate that. Uh, what I'd like to ask uh, Charles to do, and then I'm gonna turn it back over to Dr. Tony, is uh, Charles, I'd like you to, to share some closing thoughts uh, as a filmmaker, as an as a executive producer of the, of the reality docuseries, Eight Days. What has this experience been for you? Uh, what has it been, uh, what does it mean to you? And uh, thank you. Um, uh, to be to be very honest, it it means everything. This is um, something that bigger than any of us. This is something that could live on for a very long time. You know, this is something that um, once again, when I do these projects, I meet family, and you know, I intend to stay in touch with everyone for a very long time. Um. But I just, I just believe that, you know, once again, what we did here was the first of its kind. There's never been anything done like this. And we, we set a, a, a stage for something very powerful. So, um, you know, my closing um, remarks are we just need to just keep pushing this thing. Like I said, when I'm reading these comments and the feedback from people, it's, it's literally, it's unbelievable. And so for me, it fires me up because I'm like, listen, we've got to got to keep pushing this thing. We got to get this thing, man, on on a bigger level. You know, we got to make sure that this thing is seen by millions of people because this feedback, you know, you, you know, when you when you make a television, I don't think anybody watches 90 Day Fiance and says, man, that was amazing. It was riveting. It brought me to tears. You know, it, it's, it's ratchet stuff that, you know, it may be entertaining, but that's really about it. But when you create a project like this, where the feedback and the comments, you, you're seeing just, you know, amazing comments that just make you feel like, you know, what well, we really did something. Um, it just makes me work harder. And literally, I, I think yesterday I said, man, I'm after, after a couple hours, I said, man, I'm, I'm done promoting today. You know, I was tired. It didn't take me more than an hour to get back on there, man, and 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 promoting and sending Twitter and Instagram. I, I was even blocked by Instagram <laughs> for sending a bunch of uh, uh, messages out there on on the show, and and because I, I realized that you know every person that we reach out to, that I'm meeting on in social media and all these these platforms, that. Um, that's one more person. And then that person ends up sharing it with two or three people. And it can go on like that. And so whether it's, you know, I'm doing any podcast that we can just to, to make sure that the word gets out there and pushing this, you know, as much as we can. So that's why it's, it's, it's really important that, you know, we, we realize that, and I tell them all that you guys are the stars. You know, this is that, you know, this is really not about me. I tried to play the background, but you guys are a part of something that literally is, is, is groundbreaking and, you know, just let's keep pushing. We've got a, a great couple of episodes coming up here, man, that we really start to get into some of the meat of, of what's going on. And, and like Dr. Tony says, you know, we have some, some bumps in the road. We have some ups, some downs. We have some laughs some cries. And, um, but it, it's, it's real life and it's what everyone is dealing with. When you put five people, six, seven people in a household together and each of them have different personalities and different things going on, you're gonna get reality. But the reality was that everyone came to give back, share um, and, and learn. And I think we're still learning, you know? Um, I, I, I mentioned something to Carrie yesterday and you know, about, you know, this is life is a daily up and down, a daily fight. And, but I think we, 
we did something amazing here that um, I'm just really, really excited about. And, and obviously, Jay, the fact that you saw it, took the time, saw what we were doing and wanted to bring us together, I think that it shows that, um, you know, we may not have, you know, uh, we may not be Real Housewives of Atlanta and, and we don't need to be. What we need to be is, is good programming, good TV, good content that can change lives. And, and you know what, we need more than this. If you look at even what Hope for Cancer stands for, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's based on a lot of, you know, spirituality and, 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 and looking up in that sky and giving thanks to, to someone greater, greater than, than we are. Um, and I'm sure where's Kate, I'm sure she could agree. Where she, where'd she go? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so it, it's really about, about that. And I think that at the end of the day, you know, putting, putting uh, that high power first and, and working hard on uh on our bodies and on our minds and and it's something that uh we, we left something here we left something here so um let's keep pushing guys we got a great show and and we need to get it out to the world so i i, I said the other day man they're gonna get they my folks people on social media they're gonna get sick of me you know what i'm saying <laughs> and it, and it's all right they're going to get sick of me. I'm promoting this every day. I'm throwing this in your messenger box. I'm, I'm, I'm getting banned on Twitter, banned on, on, on Instagram. I'm, I'm pushing this, you know, and, and we're going to keep pushing this every day to, to, uh, to we, we continue to get this in, in other platforms too as well, which we're working on. So Yeah. Well, thank, thank you for sharing that, Charles. I'd say this is that it's less about pushing and it's more about passion. You see, you do what you're passionate about. You, this is your, I believe this is your third docu-series. You, you created one uh, that was based on your own story of healing from diabetes. I believe that's about to be released. Uh, you did one regarding a story about a medical condition that's very unknown in the world that uh, your mom had been diagnosed with and is still living with. And, um, and now you have eight days. And so you're a man that steps forward. I call you the man with nine lives like a cat. Uh, <laughs> you've done so many achievements in your, in your short life uh, outside of just making films, important films, films of relevance, films of content, films of inspiration, and films of hope. Uh, this particular docu-series, you know, you, you tagged it, you call it Eight Days. What came to me as you were just sharing your closing comments, Charles, is it's really what you have created is a house of hope. It was a house of hope. Yeah. Uh, that that uh, was just an absolutely beautiful yeah. experience. You know what I also saw coming through in episode one and two, not only is it a house of hope, it's a house of love. Even how you showed up as the filmmaker uh, in front of the camera, part of the experience, at least in the first two episodes, I have seen you show up with love and kindness and just uh, energy about you, a persona that just you created a very safe space for uh, the cast members to, to do something none of them had done before which is participate in the reality show based on their true story. It and so thank me, you. Trust me, it took, cause uh, you know, um, logistics, um, Hope for Kansas team, you know, uh, 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 Ryan and, and, and everyone over there all chipped in and helped put everything together and, and the chefs and um, the crew and it, it really, it wasn't it wasn't easy but it 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 actually uh it was worth every second of it and yeah. um, it, you know uh, i'm proud to to know some of these folks here and uh the, you know um you know it it um it's it's touching trust me it's very touching i mean i might not be as emotional as kate but i i do it does touch me to the point where you know um it it can bring a a tear because I think of the relationships and the friendships. You know, we spent some time over there at Jose's house with him and his wife and Janine, and and we had a great time. And we cooked and we ate, and and 
you know, literally it was like, I mean, we, we, we form, man, it's, 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 it's a bond, you know, it's a bond. Beautiful. Know? Beautiful. Thank you so much, Charles, for, for, um, for putting this together with me for this evening, Dr. Tony, I'd like to invite you to, to put a pretty bow on this interview on the show and on this reunion of house of hope and share some closing thoughts for someone perhaps that maybe needs to hear something that you're about to say. Can I say something before uh, Dr. Tony comes on? Absolutely. Because he's going to, he's, he's, he's going to uh, like this. Uh, story, story of hope, story of hope uh, that you guys were, uh, you were talking about. Two people reached out to me after the first episode of uh, eight days. One was you, Jay, about this interview today. But the other person was a, my new friend. Her name is Kat. She is a mom with, uh, uh, I think it's four, four children. And uh, she texted this. She said, just watched the eight days last night and immediately started weeping when I heard you talk. I am a sold out Christ follower who was just diagnosed, trying to gather all hope all hope-filled people around me, okay? And what a, what a, what a great story, this, this, this mom. She, uh, and I've been, the whole week, uh, uh, Charles, uh, Dr. Tony, I've been, we've been texting, you know, giving her some, some protocol, giving her some hope, giving her some encouragement, you know? And, it's, and, and um, she wants to go to Hope for Cancer. You know, and so we're praying about her raising the money or finding a way to go. And uh, it's just, it's just, and it's not the only person. Uh, Caroline has been getting calls, same thing, from all over, all over the place, they're coming in. This is truly, you know, the power of, 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 of genuine love and support, you know, and we're spreading the hope. And just so glad to be a part of it. Yes, amen. 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 Thank you, Jose. Dr. Tony, you're up. All right. Well, talking about hope, I, I'm now calling it living hope because this is a hope of, of life. And um, it's, you know, eight days had bumps in the road, like Charles was just mentioning, up and downs, twists, um, me trying to get up on something that you'll see in the first in, in other episodes charles where you had to help boost me up you know so many things that i think some of us never thought we were doing some of the things we did on the same days right but we did them because we were all in it for the same reason we were all in it out of love out of living hope out of faith and out of generosity and what each of you that are on this, uh, on this uh, show now have done is you've blessed so many people. And what Jose just mentioned, that's a few that we know of. Imagine the hundreds of thousand, and Lord willing in the near future, the millions that will have that living hope again. This is, this is surreal. Uh, I also like to say that it's very interesting that uh, this aired, uh, eight days started airing, and you, Jay, with your show today during this COVID-19 pandemic. And this is interesting to me because, um, and I say this humbly, in a humble way, is that, uh, you know, the soccer stars are not the stars. <laughs> the movie people are not the stars. Excuse me about that, Charles. <laughs> you're, you're an exception. <laughs> but you know what I mean? And the real stars of this are the people going through the challenges. The, in this case, with eight days, the patients themselves and those providing the services, right? The doctors, the nurses, the therapists, the respiratory therapists, the radiologists, uh, the nutritionists, the, the front desk people, just like what's happening now in this COVID-19 pandemic. So this is a real awakening and uh, with eight things airing in this time that it aired, it just, it just symbolizes what eight days is about, what Hope for Cancer is about, and more importantly, what each of you are about. And uh, I just, this is, uh, this is, this was planned, not by us, but
but it was planned by high, higher power. And so I have no doubt that uh, eight days is going to bring a lot of blessings, a lot of awareness. And, and once again, I thank each and every one of you uh, for coming into my life and, and allowing me to, to help you in this journey of healing and living hope. So thank you again. And thank you, Jay. Thank you, Dr. Tony. We love you. Uh, you're welcome, Dr. Tony. And I, I just want to thank both you and, and Charles for accepting my invitation to step in today and put together this reunion. Um, it means a lot to me. But more importantly, I wanted to do this for each one of you that have been touched by the commitment and the work that Dr. Tony, Marcy, and Charles has put into eight days, as well as the three plus decades of science and work to save lives. And uh, it means the world to me. And I'm just honored to be given this opportunity when I got, when I said to myself, it's possible. I'm going to put the invite out. It's possible that you will say yes. You see, that's how it works. We just have to believe. We just have to have the courage to ask. We just have to have the courage to show up. Even when the odds may appear to be stacked against us. Odds mean nothing. What each one of you have done and continue to do is defy the odds. And with that, thank you for joining me this evening on Real People, Real Health. Stay healthy, stay happy, and continue to live in faith over fear. And with that, have a beautiful evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you. you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Yeah, take it easy, everybody. Night. Thanks, Jay. Love you. Be good, everybody.